Okay, so we're fiddling with some new software because I got a little bit frustrated with some of the synchronization problems with the last software. So we'll see how this goes. It's going to um, limit some of the editing that I, I can do after, uh, but I think uh, it's going to work out uh, ultimately better than what I was using before, unless they can fix those technical issues. <coughs> Pardon me. So we're jumping back into the document. We're going to go over the fundamentals of typesetting. So you got to remember, it takes a little bit of effort at the front end to do things correctly so that we save ourselves a lot more time later on. Documents are done for editing. Nobody works by themselves anymore, or very few people do. We all work in teams. We all uh, have other people making input into uh, our work. Uh, and so we need to be able to build the document to accommodate that. So we're gonna build the foundation right now. We're gonna talk about the various characters and how they come together. A little bit about how the, the program displays that information so that we can make sure that we're using things the way they're intended to be done and that's going to make it easier on us later on. So I'm going to flip around to the computer and we'll see what we can do. Okay, there we are. We're back in our document and the only thing that's different is I've added a little bit of filler text just so we have something to, to work with and we can see it. So that's just that standard Latin uh, filler text that uh, Microsoft Word provides or a number of programs provide uh, so that we have something to see. Now, if I turn on my show hide, which I had before, you can see the characters that surround the words themselves. And so in this case, we only have two other characters uh, being used. We have spaces, which are shown by that little dot, and we have um, paragraph spaces or returns, which stop one paragraph and go into the next. So one of the things you see is, of course, if you continue typing past the end of a line, uh, the program will automatically bring you to the start of the next line. And it does that normally at a space. So the spaces become really important. Uh, the other thing, other places where it'll naturally try to, to break uh, a line is hyphens. If, they, if you have a hyphen there, it will choose to break it at a hyphen. So that's great. We just got to remember that. And that's why spaces are important. We don't want to put spaces where we don't need them or we don't want to use spaces to represent a different kind of space in the document because it will have an impact on how it uh, transitions from one line to the next. One of the places where we see spaces misused quite often is at the beginning of a paragraph where, say, somebody wants to have an indent. And so maybe they add five or six spaces to create that space. And if we turn off our show hide, you can see how that looks like an indent. Okay, there's all sorts of reasons why not to do that. And the, the first one is how it deals with the space. The other one is it'll change the amount of space uh, presented. will change depending on which font is chosen. Okay, different fonts have different amount of space. And so it's gonna, it's gonna change it and you're not gonna like the results if you have to change your font later on. Again, remember, we're building the document for editing. Somebody comes along, a different editor or, or a, a professor says, no, you're using the wrong font, use a different font. All of a sudden, everything is off if you've used spaces the way they're not intended. There's a way to have space at the beginning of a line or, or in the middle and whatnot. And so we just got to make sure we choose the right character for that. Okay, I'm going to put on my show hide. I'm going to take away those spaces. And let's look at a couple other things that we need uh, to see to get the right feedback. So let's look up at the ruler and let's look and see what the ruler shows us. So we have a dark space and we have a light space. And the dark space is blocked off because those are the margins that we set up in the page layout. And the light space is the space where we're going to put most of our text. So it's an eight and a half inch wide page. And we have one inch margins left and one inch margin right. So that leaves us with six and a half inches of usable space. We can use the margins. We don't normally use the margins, so we're not going to uh, look at that right now. Uh, other things the ruler shows you, it shows you different types of tabs. So if we want to input tabs in our document, uh, we're going to use the, the tab over here and put them on the ruler. Uh, these are indent markers. We have the first line indent, the hanging indent, and the right indent. And that can constrain our paragraph so that it doesn't use the entirety of the six and a half inches of usable space. And again, we'll, we'll look at indents uh, as we go along. The, the other thing that is not visible on the ruler 
that you should be aware of is that it will assume a default tab every half inch if no specific tab is uh, or explicit tab is placed on the ruler itself. So not visible, but there are uh, tabs every half inch. Okay, so down into our document, let's look at this. So the space, why does it matter? So let's add a bunch of spaces in here. And let's say we get rid of that word. And those spaces will change how things are added. So let's say we have to add more words when we're doing our editing and we extend this line. Now look what happens. We have this large space in the middle of the second line because it, you know, it, it deals with them as a block. And so we don't want those. If we wanted, and so the reason why people would add spaces at the end of the line is because they want to force it to break. So let's back up here a little bit, do some undo. Uh, get rid of these spaces. So let's demonstrate that. So let's say somebody decides they would rather have that go to the next line at that point. And so they often will add a bunch of space until it goes to the next line and it looks perfect. The problem is, is if we go to add words and now that space carries on into the second line and everything's messed up. And until we actually go through a document and find those things, we're, we're not going to get what we want. So there's a better way to do that. And one of the ways to do that, let's back up to where we entered those spaces. Instead of entering those spaces, if we wanted to carriage return there, we can just do shift enter and you see what a shift enter looks like it looks like a little enter sign and it without starting a new paragraph it brings us down to the next line and so if we were to add a bunch of words we see that it continues to bring us to the next line and I'll put in a bunch of a, a, a new space. Now, if we don't want to start a new line there, we want it to be controlled automatically, then we shouldn't have used that in the first place when we just let the program control it. Uh, let's say you want this paragraph to be indented left and right. So we can do that by picking up the left indents and the right indents, and we can con constrain that. And we might do that for a footnote or a quote or something like that where we want it to be indented. And the nice thing is there is that if we make some edits to this, it will still present itself in the way that we intended. I'm going to undo that. Uh, so other characters that we want to, to look at. So we have a space. Now, because Microsoft Word will choose to break something at a space uh, if the line, we don't always want that. You know, some of the places might be, say, if we talk about, um, I don't know, three stars, for example. So let's say you had three stars. Quite often, you don't want to separate the three from the stars because it, it, would, it just looks funny. It doesn't read well anymore. And so there is a character, what we call a non-breaking space, and we can do that by hitting Control, Control Shift Space, sorry, Control Shift Space, and you see it looks like a little degree symbol, but again, it's invisible. It's one of those invisible characters, but it means it's a non-breaking space so that as we get to the end of the, the line, it won't actually break there until it can bring both three and stars around to the other side. Okay, and there are lots of places where we might want to do that. The other place, uh, or the, the similar character that you should be aware of, of course, because we know hyphens, say it's three stars, hyphenated, and again, you often don't want the hyphen to, uh, to break onto the other side. And so again, control shift hyphen, would give us a non-breaking hyphen. You see it's a little bit longer. It prints the same uh, and displays the same in, in written 
variant. You see, if I turn off the show hide, now it shows the what the hyphen looks like. It's the same, but similar to the non-breaking space, when I go to the end, it won't break at the hyphen, which it normally would. It will take three stars and keep them together. And that's a really valuable tool when it comes to editing to keep the bits together, no matter what we do with the uh, document around it. Okay, so let's talk about the tab. Uh, I'm going to pop in some uh, text that we can use just to demonstrate how it can be used to line up text at a particular spot. So I'm just going to hit Control V, sorry, on my document. Uh, so in this case, we have an equation, uh, and then we have the variables defined, and you can see the way I've built that. So the equation's in its own paragraph, and then all of the variables defined are in a single paragraph, but they have a forced uh, carriage return between the lines so that it's uh, gonna go down. It's probably a pretty good example of where you want it to go to the next line, but you don't want it to be, it to be in a separate paragraph. Um, so in all, I guess in most cases, we probably want the variables all to line up one under the other. And so the best way to do that, you could try to do that by putting in a bunch of spaces. This is an example of where it would be inappropriate to try to use the spaces to try to get them to line up. It doesn't work very well because uh, the different characters within the font have different spaces and it just never seems to, to work out. Uh, but rather what we probably want to do is we're going to, so we're going to put a tab before the sigma and then a tab before each of the other lines. And depending on where your tabs is, so we'll put a left, they will line up. So as long as they show up, I'm sorry, as long as they show up where the sigma can move together with it, not before, where it's still in the word uh, where, um, then you can get them all to line up. And you can see how the tab works really well. We have the tab now shows up in the ruler and continues with the defaults after the explicit tab and everything works out really well. So I do, I'm gonna take a, a second for a, a little bit of a, 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 a tangent here. Uh, one of my pet peeves. So if we have our equation typeset up here, and in this case, uh, variables are represented by a Times New Roman italic, then where they show up in their definition down here, they should also show up so that they look the same as they are in the equation. So Times New Roman and italic. And it just, it's a better connection. Uh, uh, you associate with it much uh, better if they always show up and look the same everywhere in the document, whether it's on a graph, in an equation, or in the text. Okay, so much for that aside. Okay, so let's look at indents. It's another way to control our text. We've already talked about, uh, about them a little bit when we looked at the ruler. Let's throw in some text. Uh, and we want to look at the indents for this paragraph or what our choices are. So we can already we already know that we can uh, uh, adjust them for, for this one paragraph by going up here and playing on the ruler. But the other place where we can do it is by bringing up the dialog box for paragraphs. And we can do that up here in the paragraph section on the ribbon. We can hit the arrow down and that will open up the dialog box. Alternatively, if we're down in the paragraph and we right click, bring up the contact sensitive menus and we can just choose paragraph and we get to it at the same time. And here we have an entire section just on indentation. And there's a lot that can be done in a fairly simple spot within this box. So uh, we can control our left indents and you can see how it is showing you in the preview screen what that's going to look like. That's your left indent your right indent, if you want to indent it half an inch, and then your special. So if you have a first line and you want to indent it, you can see here that the first line is going to be indented more, or hanging indent alternatively, where the first line stays to the uh, full extent and the subsequent ones are indented. So let's have none of that and we'll just have nothing on the left first line indent and we'll indent half an inch and we can see how that is reflected here in our document. Notice that there's no characters in here because we didn't have to write a character to get it to, to do that. And now that paragraph is, carries those uh, characteristics. We can also make other paragraphs look identical and that's to come in, in the, the next lesson.
Okay, so indents work absolutely great in getting the, I guess, the envelope of the paragraph to put the paragraph in the right spot, and that's where those should be used. Okay, so we, we, we haven't really talked about it too much. We, we made inference to it uh, early on is paragraphs. So we already noted that each of these paragraph marks denote a new paragraph. Uh, and that's different than just going between lines. Uh, it always goes to a new line for a new paragraph. Uh, but also we want to give the paragraph, you know, a certain characteristics uh, that, that wrap it up. So one of the things that we probably want to do, so if we look at that paragraph there, is that we open up the paragraph box and we, sorry, oh, I got font somehow. Let's open up paragraph and look at the spacing. And quite often we want some kind of space before or after a paragraph. Uh, I tend to always do after. It's just a convention, so I always know where that space is showing up. It doesn't always work out the best, but that's what I do. So let's say we want an extra line. The line is normally 12 points. So we want to put an extra line after the paragraph. And so when we hit OK, we don't have to put extra carriage returns in to get the, those spaces in there. It's just a characteristic of the paragraph. And so wherever that, you know, if we were to copy that paragraph and paste it in, we'll see that it always carries an extra space behind it. And the nice thing is, is it will just manage that uh, as you go along. And we'll see how we can use that even more effectively when we get into building a style sheet. Okay, so, so there's your paragraph. So big difference between down here, where we've used the soft return to force a new line, but it's still within the same paragraph. So for example, in this one, if we open up paragraph and we insert a line after it, we'll see that it's only done after the last line because the other ones are all within the same paragraph. And you start to get an idea of how this is going to make editing really easy because it's going to interpret everything when we do a, a change. So one of the things that you see fairly often with uh, somebody who's not, doesn't really know their way around the paragraph is let's say you wanted to have this paragraph show up on a new page. And we see we're still quite a ways down from the new page here. And what you'll often see is people will just start entering in a bunch of carriage returns until we get down to the new page and then we're good to go. Well, I hope it's obvious that when it comes to editing, that's not going to make our life easier. Let's say we added some more text in on this page. Now look what's happened on our second page. We have all these extra carriage returns, extra paragraphs on the second page, putting in space where we don't want it. So we don't really want to use the carriage return other than to denote new paragraphs. And so there's a better way. So if we go control enter, it simply puts in what we call a page break and it puts it on a new page. So if what you want is a new page there, enter control enter and it put in a page break and you get the page starting where you want the page to start. Now, when you're building a document, one of the things that I would advise is, is sometimes we force a carriage return just because what's there doesn't look right because we, you know, we've got a, a paragraph by itself or, or something like that. And, and so we fix the pagination at the very, uh, uh, to make it look right. Do that kind of thing is kind of the very last thing once all of your edits are done uh, so that it's you're not entering in things that you're going to have to change again when the edits uh, mess up your spacing and your pagination. So, so that those kind of manual fixes should just be done at the very end. Uh, that would be my suggestion to you. Okay, so those are the foundational building blocks of using the characters the way the characters were intended to be made. We have lots of other skills. We're going to package together how to do tables of contents, a list of figures and captions and, and all of that good stuff and numbering. But the first thing we have to do to, to make it all work is to get the basic building blocks correct and so that all the edits that follow are going to work out uh, the way we want them to. And so hopefully uh, that means we've got the foundation upon which to build all the rest of the skills.